This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. And welcome everybody to another Freakazoid episode of the Animaniacast. Keep them coming, Mike. Expendable lad, we hardly knew ye. <laughs> hey, Mike, enough with the bells. Sorry, I'm giving angels their wings. Well, cut it out and give me another one. Hey, slow down, Mr. F. It's not like Expendable Lad's dead or anything. He's just in the hospital with a bruised clavicle. I said give me another one. Curse your tiny paper hat! Hello and welcome to another episode of... Freakazoid and Friends. This is the spin-off series of the Animani cast, and we are the only podcast that lets you freak out and talk about Freakazoid. Here we pick a random episode. <laughs> this is not never mind. Uh, <laughs> a random episode. Revisiting all the cultural references and gags, and of course, in the end, we give this episode a Water Tower rating. I am Joey, and joining me once again are my co-hosts in Los Angeles. It's my brother, Nathan. Maybe they should call you Eric the Large Guy Without Any Pants. (laughs) And across the country in Georgia, it's Kelly. Hello. Whoa, Kelly! There's a there's somebody speeding in the background right there. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, we we have some. I don't know if it's a motorcycle or a car, but almost every night they go driving by my damn house. Wow. Okay. Well, I assume she was like on the freeway or something. Like, yeah. This nope. I'm Skype, in my room. Skype call from the 405. Well, <laughs> <laughs> today uh, instead of Animaniacs or Tiny Toons or Pinky in the Brain, we're once again. Going back to Freakazoid, and as Nathan likes to put it, visiting a quote-unquote random episode. Um, but just out of coincidence, Nathan, this is the fourth episode in the series. Pretty, yeah, pretty no, it, just come, it comes out of the, after the third one, which we did last week, which is kind of fun. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, go, go figure. Good. We're just so lucky that we're just pulling these randomly out of a hat, yeah. and it just happens to be sequential. So, good job, well, Nathan. I guess. Good. You know, I mean, <laughs> hey, it's it's uh, statistically possible. Uh, so, <laughs> well, today we are going to be talking about uh, two major segments, and then a a couple of little, uh, I guess you could say, filler things. There's a, a little Poseidon adventureish kind of thing with the Freakazoid, and also a a little Frenching with Freakazoid at the end. Ooh la la! But the two major segments are called. And Fanboy is his name. And then, of course, we have Lawn Gnomes Chapter 4, Fun in the Sun. So, what would you tell us? What would you tell somebody if they asked you uh, what this episode of Freakazoid was all about, Nathan? Um, I like Star Wars, and there's at least one Star Wars reference in this. So. Yeah. And Kelly, what about you? It had Mark Hamill. It certainly did. It's the one with Mark Hamill. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nathan, tell us, when did this episode of Freakazoid, which has at least one Star Wars <laughs> reference, uh, when did this episode first premiere? Well, um, I'm glad you asked, because I uh, looked it up, and it would have been a waste of my time if you didn't ask me. So, uh, <laughs> Saturday, September 30th, 1995... Uh, which was just uh, one day after the jury began deliberation on the O.J. Simpson trial, where in a few days they would find him not guilty. It was also the same day as the Animaniacs episode featuring the Tiger Prince and the Kid in the Lid, and uh, just a week after the episode of Please, Please Get a Life Foundation. So, please, please, please get a life foundation. Which I thought was similar to this episode in some mm-hmm. regards. <laughs> in, yeah, in many regards. I, you got to think at this point... Obviously, the the writers of, of Freakazoid and Animaniacs and 
and so 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 on uh, have had experience obviously with. They're with trying to tell us something. Yeah, <laughs> I know. We'll get into it a little bit, but when like uh, fanboy was talking to George Takei, I was just uh, like, oh yeah, that was that was like me and uh, Peter Hastings up there, kind of like <laughs> I'm yep. not one of those people. <laughs> well. Anyway, let's go ahead and get straight into our discussion, and it starts off with a cold open before the credits and everything, which is a Poseidon Adventure parody. So in this little cold opening, it's just the captain and his crewmen up in the front, and they see this giant wave of some sort, but it's not a water wave, it's a wave of hair approaching them and it's freakazoid hey you guys in there you want to watch my show do we have a choice so there we go there, there's our quick little opening and uh yeah poseidon adventure i barely remember the poseidon adventure i remember seeing a little bit of it um it's a basically it's about a, kind of like the titanic except the ship i believe flips upside down due to a giant wave and um, have either of you seen the Poseidon Adventure? I doubt it. <laughs> no, I don't think so. In the early morning hours of New Year's Eve, the SS Poseidon, en route from New York to Athens, was struck by a 90-foot tidal wave. Oh, my God. And capsized. Irwin Allen's production of The Poseidon Adventure. Of 1,400 people on board, only a handful will survive. This is their story. That's the way out. That's our only chance. Don't listen to him! So, the original movie starred people like Gene Hackman, Ernest Borgnine, Red Buttons, Carol Lee, Roddy McDowell, Stella Stevens, Shelley Winters, Jack Albertson, Pamela Sue Martin, Arthur O'Connell, uh, Leslie Nielsen as Captain Harrison. Ooh. So maybe he's supposed to be the, the that guy who's like, do we have our choice? Maybe that's supposed to be like a parody uh, of uh, Leslie Nielsen, perhaps, right there. Kind of looks like Leslie Nielsen, I suppose. But the only part I really remember is Shelley Winters uh, diving underwater to do stuff. I don't know. It was, like, it was kind of this suspenseful action scene where Shelley Winters has to hold her breath for a certain amount of time and dive under the water to open up a porthole or something like that. I really don't remember much for this movie other than I saw it as a little kid and it was kind of like Titanic except uh, not as interesting. <laughs> but it, I, it, I think it goes to all those movies in the you know early to mid 70s that were all disaster movies, you know, airport and obviously the Poseidon adventure and earthquake and all those different things like that. So hmm. there we go. Poseidon adventure, but this time with Freakazoid. Uh, <laughs> any thoughts about this? Uh, do you, <laughs> uh, since neither of you have seen the original movie, did, did you guys like this? It was, it was pretty short. I thought it was very accurate to the source material. Um, <laughs> from what I know. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Could you tell um, it was a wave? I mean, I I thought I always thought it was like an like supposed to be like a an iceberg up ahead, right? But I just I mean, like as soon as he starts looking through the binoculars, it's clear that it's Freakazoid's hair. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, what show am I watching? Well, I know I'm watching Freakazoid. <laughs> Kelly, any thoughts about this first little segment before we move on to our first major one? Nope. All right, well, let's get on to the first one here. First one's called. And Fanboy is his name. Period. <laughs> and Fanboy is his name is uh, written by the one and only Paul Dini. And it was directed by Scott Geralds. And Kelly, why don't you tell us what happens here in And Fanboy is his name? There is a young guy, uh, we'll call him Fanboy. <laughs> who is a, at a comic shop and uh, he sees Mr. Sulu himself and gets way excited and starts talking to him and, you know, fanboying out and 
follows him out of the store and... Hey! I want you to know right now that I'm not one of those weirdos. I always respect the boundary set between a, a creative person and their audience. Sulu! I'm walking with Sulu! Yeah. George Takei, uh, Mr. Sulu, walks across the street and he finally manages to get get away from him um, because a car comes and cuts Fanboy off. But then he sees on the TV that uh, Freakazoid is in the middle of a fight with his new psychic, Expendable Lad. And they're fighting, um, I don't know, Milk. Milkman, Lactic Man, what is his name? I think it was <laughs> Milkman. Yeah, I think it was something. the Milkman, yeah. Something like <laughs> that. And um, so this ridiculous villain, villain, and um, Expendable Ad gets like dashed up against the wall or something. And um, so then Freakazoid is at a um, at the counter of a, a an establishment, and he's. Downing all these drinks, apparently they're p- papaya juices or, or something, because he's allergic to cran apple. <laughs> and um, we find out Freakazoid's weakness. It's not, uh, yeah. you know, kryptonite. It's cran apple. Yeah, so he can't uh, <laughs> can't have that. So um, he tells the the guy working there that uh, he wants some more, and he keeps drinking and drinking, and um, then Fanboy shows up. If I want to blitz myself into some papaya-induced hallucination, that's my business. Hello! Wait, wait! Yummy. I'm Fanboy. I'm going to be your new sidekick. And he's decided, he's wearing a little cape, and um, he's got like a little FB on his shirt, and he says he's going to be his new sidekick, and he's like, no, you're not. Sorry. Nope. And uh, then what follows is a whole bunch of uh, shenanigans where Freakazoid tries to get rid of him. I mean, Fanboy gets in the car, and he boots him out of the car, and then um, he takes him to his Freaka lair. And uh, just kind of like the Bat Cave, complete with Butler. And uh, then he um, tells him to count to 900 and covers his face. And uh, then he's like, I'm free. But then Fanboy's right there. Uh, I hate to tell you, but you already used that trick to escape the Venusian moon goons in the heck bent for Sparky episode. He can't get rid of this kid. And um, then they're at a, I guess, sort of a comic show, comic con kind of thing. And um, he's trying to offer him a, you know, autograph picture of Stan Lee. And and um, then he's like, wait, there's Mark Hamill. And Fanboy doesn't believe him. And he's like, I'm not falling for that. And then he realizes that it actually is Mark Hamill. And so he starts to approach him and basically reciting lines from Star Wars. Why settle for being a mere sidekick when Jedi knighthood awaits? Yes, the Force is strong in this one. Luke, join me! Come again? Join me and together we can end this destructive conflict and rule the galaxy as fanboy and son! No! I'll never join you! It is your destiny! No! No, wait! Come back! Come back! I won't hurt you! And there we go. And that's, uh... Oh, and I forgot that. Of course, it, it ends with, I guess, Freakazoid doing his best Daffy Duck impression, jumping all around the uh, the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> well, there are quite a few uh, references to, to various things in this episode. First of all, uh, I was surprised to find out that um, Freakazoid's at the Papaya Queen 
uh, stand, which is just this giant queen that uh, you can serve. You apparently can get papaya juice and uh, hot dogs. And it's actually a real place, based upon a real place, I should say. Because in the New York area, there's a place called Papaya King. And guess what they serve? Papaya juice and hot dogs. And hmm. uh, I don't know if you, I don't know if drinking their juice makes you do a spit take that lasts five minutes or not, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they do, they they can. I say the next Freakacon, everyone goes to Papaya King, and we rename it Papaya Queen for just for the afternoon or something like that. Perhaps I don't know, but that's just me. Expendable lad. Now, Nathan, I is there a director's commentary for this episode? Because I feel no. no, there's not. I don't know how I know this, but Expendable Lad, maybe it was in the Freakacon they were talking about it or something. But Expendable Lad is Paul Dini actually, and he's voiced by Paul Dini, and he kind of looks like a very fit and trim Paul Dini in a way. And I think he has that one line, the oof line. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, at at Papaya Queen, Mike is there, and he's ringing his bells. The bells. <laughs> now Nathan and I, I know we know this reference because we saw it all the time. But uh, Kelly, do you know what this is in reference to? Is it? It's a Wonderful Life. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's giving the, those angels wings. Yep, and he's even he's uh, Mike is uh, drawn exactly like Mike the Bartender in It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, uh-oh. Comedy's just made it. Made what? Every time you hear a bell rings, it means that some angel's just got his wings. Look, uh, I think maybe you know, better not mention uh, getting your wings from out here. But Why? Don't they believe in angels? Uh, yeah, I believe. Oh, why should they be surprised when they see one? Uh, he never grew up. He's uh, how old are you anyway, Clarence? Two hundred and ninety-three. Uh, next May. That does it. Aren't you two pixies go through the door or out the window? What, Nick? What's wrong? The voice, by the way, of fanboy is a voice that some people might be familiar with. He was... He did a, quite a few voices over the years, and he passed away, I think... I want to say in 2007. But it was by Stephen First. Uh, Stephen First uh, was... Uh, oh, I feel terrible. I don't know his name, but he was in uh, uh, Animal House. It was one of his main uh, parts. He was the, the big kind of fat guy <laughs> in, in Animal House. What's my Delta Tau Kai name? Dorfman, you've given this a lot of thought. From now on, your name is Flounder. Flounder? Uh, okay, any other little references? I guess the one of the main ones, obviously, is we have Stan Lee. And it's this weird moment, at least in contemporary eyes... An autographed photo of Stan Lee? Who's that? No idea. At the time, this was kind of true. That that I remember watching this as a kid, or I say kid, I was like in high school at the time. But I was watching it going, yeah, who is Stan Lee? And that's the way I when they said that, I thought it was actually just like a fake picture trying to be passed off as Stan Lee. Oh, yeah. But, like, they're looking at the picture saying, who's that? And <laughs> I don't know. I, that's sort of the way I interpreted it. Yeah, at, at the time, I interpreted it as, it, like, when I originally saw this, as, yeah, who is that? Because Stan Lee was such a, like, I didn't know who he was until the Marvel films really started coming out. And then he was, like, in all of them, you know? Mm-hmm. We were watching, my dad and I were watching one of the Marvel movies, and I started laughing because it was one of his cameos, and I said... Well, no, I, he started laughing, too. And I was like, why are, you, why are you laughing? He's like, that's Stan Lee. I was like, how 
how do you know who Stan Lee is? And he recognized him from some show he'd been on or something. But I was, my, believe me when I say my dad is not the first person that comes to mind when you think of people who know who Stan Lee is. I mean, <laughs> I know he's my father and everything, but he just is not. I have to explain most pop culture references and, and things to him. <laughs> Well, uh, and then he sh- and then he sh- throws out another obscure person, actually a pretty obscure person that, like, I know the name, but I was like, who is this again? Harlan Ellison. Yeah, I was like, what? Yeah, Harlan Ellison wrote a lot of uh, you know science fiction and things like that. His notable works, according to Wikipedia, <laughs> are Dangerous Visions as an editor, A Boy and His Dog, I Have No Mouth and Must Scream, Repent Harlequin. Said the TikTok man in the city of Edge of Nowhere. Well, I, yeah, so this is all stuff I have no idea what it is. But yeah, there, there that's that's uh, that's him. So he's won eight Hugo Awards. So he's a you know science fiction author, and I'm just not familiar with his work. I know the name, but none of those titles sound familiar. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm going through all the other stuff, and uh, no. <laughs> He might have written, yeah, I think he wrote some short stories and stuff like that. And uh, he got the Bram Stoker Award. I mean, I'm going through his Wikipedia. He's a very notable uh, author, but just not notable enough for uh, us to know what he, who he is. <laughs> he does science fiction. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking that Stanley, like, I guess in the 90s, there weren't, there was really, like, DC was really big in the 90s. Yeah, but I Marvel mean, there was. was I kind of dead, right? Like, yeah, I mean, there was the X Men cartoon series, yeah, and the Spider Man cartoon series, but it's not like but, they were they kind of showed like, you know, Stan Lee. The X Men cartoon those. series was yeah. amazing, by the way. Yeah, I watched, I, I watched I a little I watched bit. It, I it watched it in uh, syndication. Mister Sinister. <laughs> what about Mister um, Sinister? He w- he was in the cartoon. <laughs> that's true. I mean that's that's all that matters. That's that's all I need to say about it. Well, also, what's so important about Mister Sinister is that he's sinister. He's, a, he's amazing. Okay. No, he's just cool, and he's got a cool cape. Got oh, okay. Cool, cool well, like, it's, that's your favorite X Men villain. Then, Wait, or? is he the guy? Yeah. Is he the guy who looks kind of like a vampire or something? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. He's got like, this. He's white. Yeah. Ribbony cloak and I. I think he's amazing. And does it, what, did, what is his power? Like, he's a mutant, right? A lot of powers. And he he does, like... Um, <laughs> Sinister. No, he does. Like, the, the, if you go to his Wikipedia page, you get, like, a whole paragraph of powers. And oh, I know. I've, I've decided long ago not to go on Wikipedia pages of comic book characters because I will get trapped in a... It's a rabbit hole. Oh, oh my it's God. Fun. It's like, what happened now with the Infinity Stones? And then the person blew up, and then the person came back, and then the person... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's well, a soap opera. It's like, it, no, that's what I was about to say, because I um, I used to watch Days of Our Lives for, for many years, and I stopped watching it, but my mom continued to watch it. And I'd walk by sometimes when I when I was visiting or whatever, like, oh, that's, you know, Jen or whatever from, from the show. Who is she with now? Oh, well, she's with so-and-so with their evil twin, and then they got killed, but then they came back to life, and then Stefano came back from the dead again. I'm like, Stefano's back? <laughs> yeah, Stefano's back. But then that time, Marlena got, you know, possessed by possessed. the devil. and all yeah. This happened. yeah, that was a thing. And then Carly got buried alive, and oh, I mean, <laughs> so it's like, so she would start answering, and I'm like, no, never mind. I thought I wanted to know, but I don't want to know. And yet my mom loves Days of Our Lives, or at least she loved Days of Our Lives, and she doesn't really like the Marvel films at all. And it's like, Mom, it's the same thing. Come on. Well, <laughs> well, well. I mean, I, I knew somebody who used to compare wrestling to soap operas, so uh, not the same thing. So <laughs> well, I, I guess it I mean, depends on your perspective. <laughs> but he was like, they're stories, you know, they, they're, they're, you know, they have plot lines. I mean... Yeah, no, this, no, no, no. According to South Park, they do. Like, there's a really great episode of South Park that really shows that they're just, they just do uh, <laughs> a nonstop uh, soap opera kind of thing, and they don't think they even wrestle at all. It's but the people love it. It's a good episode. Well, maybe maybe you can say the format's the same, but it, it definitely has different appeals to different people. Mm-hmm. All all of them, comics, soap operas, everything. Uh, well, speaking of comics and everything, let's go to this comic book area. You can get I, back to the 
the actual the actual story <laughs> we're talk, supposed to be talking about. Uh, I I thought it was kind of funny that as they're going in the comic book area, he's like, "Oh, would you like the script for Batman Four? Which of course t- ended up being Batman and Robin." And he's like, oh, "I plucked it off the internet last week." And it reminded me of two things. Number one, how you could do that a lot back in the days of the 90s. You know, it was possible to get the scripts. Now, it's not not as much these days. But um, it seems like you could get script excerpts and stuff like that of a lot of uh, different... Like, I remember when episode one was about to come out in the late ni- like 1999. Uh, I'd see, like, a paragraph here or two of, like, the script leaked. And uh, it was a big deal. But <laughs> how about that Batman and Robin, huh? <laughs> yeah. How about Nice enough? to meet you. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> before, before we get to the moments that you guys, you, you guys liked in this, and there are quite a few, uh, is, there, is it just me or did this whole cartoon kind of feel like it might have influenced... Uh, the Incredibles or something because the Incredibles opens up with Mr. Incredible and buddy, you know, who ends up becoming syndrome, but you know, buddy wants to be Mr. Incredible's sidekick. And he's like, go away, buddy. And he's like, Oh no, I know everything. I can help do this. And this, and of course he ends up causing more trouble. Um, and then I thought about like, boy, Freakazoid actually has like, a red suit and a little, you know, thing right in the center. And instead of an I, it's a, it's a F. And wait a minute, did Brad Bird just like copy Freakazoid <laughs> or something? I mean, it, the I is just an ex- upside down exclamation point, right? Ooh, good point. Cool, ready for takeoff. What the? Who are you supposed to be? Well, I'm Incrediboy. What? No. You're that kid from the fan club. Bro, bro, Brody. Bud. Buddy. Buddy. My name is Incrediboy. Look, I've been nice. I've stood for photos, signed every scrap of paper you pushed at me, but this No, no, is... no, you don't have to worry about training me. I know all your moves, your crime-fighting style, favorite catchphrases, everything. I am your number one fan. Hey, hey, wait. <laughs> so, I don't know. I... I... I always thought the costumes looked kind of similar, but then I, rewatching this, I was like, "Wait, this is a lot like the, uh, the concept of, that of, of this episode." But there we go. I don't know. Just, just a thought. Just a thought. Well, what were some moments that you guys liked about this cartoon? Uh, let's go with you, Kelly. What are some things that stood out for you? Mark Hamill. <laughs> yeah, it was funny seeing Mark Hamill, and this was like one of the times where he was not he would not play himself very often i mean obviously he was the joker at this point on the animated series and there was a lot of batman caricatures everywhere you didn't see star wars everywhere well and to actually hear his voice it's so cool and like it's it's almost word for word lines from the movie so it's fun (laughs) yeah no i'll never join you (laughs) Uh, let's see nathan what about you um, so I just, Freakazoid doesn't pay for his papaya and hot dogs. Did anyone notice that? I, did, I always get confused by that in this cartoon. He has a tap. Like, but like he puts money down. And then he grabs and the like, money. I can't. And then he picks up the money again. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, what? Well, <laughs> um, you know what? My, maybe, maybe we didn't see, uh, Mike, uh, pay, you know, give him his change. You know, maybe he was just picking up his change. It's it's literally like him putting the money down, then he burps, and then he picks up the money again. <laughs> like it's it bothers me. I don't know why it bothers me. But. Well, I don't. I I don't know what's going on with that part. Yeah. But um. That... Yeah. Whatever. I liked Ingmar, his mute butler. <laughs> oh, I have. By the way, I have. Uh, this is guys. This is a big deal. Um, I don't usually like to spring these things on you but i actually have the voice actor of uh ingmar on the other line let's bring him in and hello welcome sir how's it going uh, okay well, was, he, yeah did that's, we lose him that's Ing, no that was ingmar he, he was, oh okay yeah <laughs> he's a mute he's mute you know <laughs> 
What well, is taking him so long? <laughs> I always like that. He's like, holler when ready. <laughs> um, I like the line of uh, saying, uh, we do in this episode, you know, we're trying something like that, which I'm sure is more true than you've been there. <laughs> yeah, know? well, it's true because they were just making this on the seat of their pants, you know, just throwing some stuff out and see if mm-hmm. it sticks. And I think that's very true with the segment that follows this to see. Like, let's just try this and see if it works. <laughs> Yeah, um, like this is the first episode with the actual uh, Freako Freakmobile. Yes, which uh, I would I mean, love we to see, see it. in the credit, the opening segments each time. But. Yes, but it was nice to finally see the Freakmobile, and uh, it really should be a toy at some point, don't you think? I mean, I, would... I, I, I kept wait, like even though I know it's a joke, the commercial, but like I really want it to. <laughs> we had a lot of toys from like Darkwing Duck. I remember we had like mm. the Thunder Quack, and we had the motorcycle, and. I think almost every Darkwing Duck figure that you could buy, which, man, I, I wish we bought a couple of those because those other ones are kind of worth a, a lot now. <laughs> mm-hmm. so we just kept them in their package, but whatever, whatever. But yeah, Freakazoid, I really would have loved to see a Freakmobile, but of course there was no toys whatsoever, but uh, whatever. Um, anyway, just a lot of good stuff in this uh, in this first cartoon. It, it it makes me laugh each time. I really do uh, feel sorry for uh, fanboy, and I, I just like the concept of having all these adventures that you've never seen Freakazoid mm-hmm. be on. That fanboy knows all of them, and so it makes me go, "Boy, Freakazoid was rebooted. Maybe we could like see some of those adventures when he faces off against the Neptunians or the." Uh, who, some of the other people, like he ate, he swallowed somebody's dog or something. <laughs> I don't That's know. Then there was the time you tricked the pummeler into dropping his guard by swallowing his dog. You really have no life, do you? No, sir. I guess one last cool little thing I'll, I'll mention. There's not really any cool uh, things on the 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 buildings. But there is a quick reference to Dot. They show Dot. She makes a oh, new yeah. appearance. And uh, I saw uh, Picky and the Brains written out that the one author is holding. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. The Harlan Ellison's where yeah. <laughs> holding a, a Pinky and the Brain thing for some Book reason. Or something, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Uh, and by the way, when Freakazoid jumps to the top of the building and finds a fanboy inside the satellite dish... Mm-hmm. The the building is called uh it's let's see what it's called. I'm gonna like it's it up up and away, right? Up up and away or something. Yeah, it's called Travel Agency. <laughs> yeah, up up and away travel agency. So I was like, oh that's that's cute. Because he's he's going up the building. That's that's And that's something Superman says, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it, it's cute. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the one of course I think everybody really wants us to get to. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that, of course, is the Lawn Gnomes. And now we present the Lawn Gnomes. And Lawn Gnomes Chapter 4, Fun in the Sun, was written by John P. McCann, and it was directed by Turk Flipnut. Hmm. I'll get to that in a second. This has to be the other uh, Star Wars reference, right, Nathan? You were yeah, I was thinking to? this might be a Star Wars reference. <laughs> yes. Well, before we get to the discussion of this, I was, you know, just making note of the uh, of this. I'm making, I'm taking notes on this one. <laughs> As Freakazoid said, I was like, "Hey, so am I." Uh, <laughs> it's written by John P. McCann, and then it says Turk Flipnut, and I'm like, "Okay, we have we have talked about Animaniacs." We've been going through these episodes of Freakazoid. Who the heck is Turk Flipnut? So I had Paul Rugg and Tom Ruger on a little group chat, and I sent them a little message. And I said, hello, Tom and Paul. Hate to bother you, but here's a question of incredible importance. Who is Turk Flipnut? And Tom says, well, Paul and Tom, Paul and John can tell you. The fact is... He's very, very important. And John McCann said, An unhappy director 
but I can't recall the name. So I was like, oh, what is, oh, who is that? Like somebody, hmm. just an angry director. He doesn't like the guy or something like, obviously John wrote the episode. Maybe he didn't like the director, like drama. What's going on? Well, then Tom Ruger texts me back and says, oh, no, I'm just kidding. He's, he's just a name made up by McCann. So I have a feeling that this, <laughs> this, uh, Turk Flipnut, uh, if it's not missed, if it's not John McCann himself, then uh, I don't I don't know what's uh, what's a uh, it could be I think it might be could it could be actually di- directed by John McCann as well I'm not exactly sure I don't know <laughs> yeah but uh, maybe yeah it could just be that whoever directed was so like unhappy with it that they just didn't want their name (laughs) yeah yeah maybe i don't know so we still don't know for sure who it is yeah exactly so i'm gonna say steven spielberg (laughs) (laughs) all right well nathan tell us what happens here in fun in the sun oh so much uh so uh hey it's the lawn gnomes everyone's favorite and uh so uh we were uh, finding out their origin story. So next time when we see them, we'll understand what's going on. Uh, basically, uh, we go back uh, to Vikings days um, when the gnomes roam free and uh, they uh, are doing some pretty mean things. Like uh, they meet up with Eric the Large and uh, they steal his clothes and pants and then he's yelling at him. You'll pay for insulting Eric the Large! Maybe you should change your name to Eric the Large Guy without any pants. My older brother is a powerful wizard. He'll put a whopping great curse on you for this. You'll see. Yeah, sure. I'm shaking. Right if you get trousers. (laughs) (laughs) Jovial little buggers, ain't they? They're like, you know, but then where you're going to get... So you you know they're going to get cursed because this is all flashback to before they got cursed. So there's not like a huge uh, reveal, but like, <laughs> okay. The night before we got cursed, they get uh, a visited from the great mystic gnome. Boy, is that a bunch of bull hooky. The great mystic gnome. You bet your tall hat I am. Humans dislike you because you steal their trousers, pour slop on them from the top buildings, then run away and giggle. Thanks. Appreciate it. Just doing our best. That wasn't a compliment. Even by gnome standards, you are shifty, low, and disgusting. You are rats with hats. But what shall we do? You must change your ways and begin to fight wrongdoing instead of causing it. How come? It's a good thing, so do it or I'll have you roughed up. And he's like, hey, guys, you got to change your ways um, before it's too late. And they're like, hey, that's a great idea. We're going to change our ways. We're going to be good. Um, but then they decide to wait like a week or so. Uh, so the next day, they uh, they get a stick and they uh, trip this guy in a weird cloak and they tie him up and they refuse to let him out. And then he's like, he starts floating. And, you know, it turns out he's a great wizard named like... Uh, uh, Rath- Rathgar or something um, and uh, he's he's decided to put a terrible curse on these these gnomes because they're so mean and he's like hey that's and he notices that they're wearing his younger brother's helmet because he is Eric the Large's older brother the great powerful wizard so I didn't I mean whoa uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a reveal and uh, but the gnomes they decide um First, they're groveling um, and saying, like, please don't hurt us. And, you know, and that doesn't work. So then they decide to do the most uh, abhorrent thing that they, you know, can think of, which is to apologize. And they say they're sorry. And the wizard decides to put a different curse on them other than I don't know what the original curse was going to be. But uh, it was going to last 4000 years. But now all they have to do um, is just help mankind and change you know for the better basically (laughs) (laughs) once they change their ways then the curse will be lifted um but they can only uh operate at nighttime because in the daytime they'll be turned into stone or statues or whatever so 
Um, that's pretty much it. So they're like, oh, this will be real quick. Uh, we should be uh, get rid of this curse in no time. And then it cuts to present day again. And they say, well, um, we're going to keep trying to help humans. And then uh, that's the end of the episode. Because we are lawn gnomes. <laughs> So, yeah, apparently they never quite changed their ways. They always just were jerks the entire time and just would continue <laughs> to turn to stone. Oh, well, so sorry, Lawn Gnomes. Uh, well, I think the, the main thing to, to note, obviously this is referencing the, the cartoon show Gargoyles, right? Of all that series. Which I'm sure, like, no one would remember that. <laughs> but I remember that. You know, I see it mentioned quite a bit. And, okay. And so, you remember it, Kelly? Yeah, I had a lot of Star Trek the next generation voice actors on it. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you know they it, it was a it was a popular series for some. I I personally didn't really like it because it was too serious for me. Uh, when I watched Disney Afternoon, I wanted to see funny shows like Darkwing Duck and Rescue Rangers, and then and Tailspin and stuff. And then you pop in gargoyles in there too, and I'm like, well, this isn't funny. It was action, sort of. I it's like I I felt <laughs> I always felt so like it was like game. yeah I, I always felt like okay this is like they're doing Batman the animated series but I'd rather watch Batman the animated series than Gargoyles. I, I liked it but I feel it I want I'm trying to remember if it got retooled or something because I feel like I liked it at first and then I, I didn't like it. Hmm. Well I don't I don't remember but it's I I didn't watch much of it. Well, let's talk about some of the voice actors that were some of these lawn gnomes. One of them was uh, Carl Ballantyne. Uh, Carl Ballantyne, you probably wouldn't recognize him from a lot of stuff. He used to do a lot of comedy magic and uh, just, he would call like the, what did they call him? He called himself the Great Ballantyne, I believe. Uh, or maybe it's Ballantini, I'm not exactly sure. But he'd be an Ed Sullivan. But then, of course, he'd just make appearances on... I dream of genie and the monkeys and just you know if you watch Nick at Night at all growing up you would probably recognize him. Uh, he had a very noticeable voice that uh, sounded familiar. First, first the simple tricks, then I move into the more difficult tricks, and I pack up all the stuff and head to Camden. <laughs> the magician, that's what the old black rag says. The magician cuts the piece of rope in half, two pieces. Kids dynamite. Where do they find this kind of talent on a Sunday evening? In the alley, that's where. A few passes over the back. Simple trick of sticking the two hunks of rope back together again. Keep your eyes on the two hunks of rope. You have a better way. There, but they're sober. There it is, cleverly done. Together. Whoops, wrong room. I do good for my probation officer. <laughs> okay, you played around with the stuff back there. How jealous can you get? I'll tell them what happened. I ain't afraid. Some crumb back there cut them both. <laughs> what do you think I am, a magician? But another voice that sounded very familiar for me was Roscoe Lee Brown. Roscoe did the voice of the a uh, great lawn gnome spirit that gets his beard stuck in the tree. And mm. he uh, was in, he, he was a voice actor in, in many different things, but uh, I think he might have even done like just commercials uh, and stuff. But I would see him on like the Cosby show and a uh, different world and uh, just various little things like that. So I, I recognized him. Uh, by the way, Carl Ballantyne died 90, 93 years old, and Roscoe Lee Brown died when he was 84. But the main one that I'm sure you guys might be a little, at least a little bit familiar with, I would hope, would hmm. be uh, Rose Marie did the voice of the, the female troll. Hana. And, and Rose Marie, <laughs> <laughs> Rose Marie, ever watched the Dick Van Dyke show at all? Mm, oh. I mean, I've seen parts of it. It's... <laughs> It still stand. It, this it, that show is still funny to this day. Uh, Dick Van Dyke is such a funny show, and Rose Marie played um, a writer for Dick Van Dyke's character, and they would show her in the writer's room, 
uh, you know, working. And of course, this is back in the the sixties when having a, a female writer uh, was seen as so weird, you know, especially back then. So in a lot of ways, she's a, seen as a trailblazer uh, by a lot of women who, you know, just saw her as a, you know, saw her as an idol. And she, I guess she was even a child actress as well in the 1930s. So, yeah, those who know her definitely know her. Anyway, let's go ahead and get to your, uh, well, I guess moments of note. I know that we had a, a little bit of a discussion before our episode started, and I don't think either one of you really uh, particularly liked the lawn gnomes too much. I don't think I'm I'm going uh, out of limb by saying that. I I feel like I could really like it. I just think that um, I don't know. I feel like I'd much rather just see them doing stuff in present day and just not even care about their origin story. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, just do a straight up like parody of gargoyles, you know. Well, it did feel like they were just a. It, we never see the gargoyles again. I don't, or not the gargoyles, the lawn gnomes. Yeah, we again. never see the gargoyles either. Yeah, no, <laughs> this is the only lawn gnomes one. Which I feel like I would like the second episode more than this one, but you know. Yeah, well, in the second se- season of Freakazoid, they just told them, no, don't focus on these other side characters. Just do Freakazoid. So mm-hmm. lawn gnomes were never seen again. Uh, but Kelly, what, what, what do you think? Any, any things that you thought were funny or just interesting perhaps? Um, I, it reminded me of Frozen a little bit. Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, (laughs) rolls, which are not the same as gnomes, but, and that's in like Norway and this was Denmark, but. Still, the opening kind of reminded me a little bit of the trolls in Frozen. Yeah, I mean, it's still the same kind of concept of turning to stone and coming to light, right? Those, you know, little trolls are sort of stones, kind of. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, it it was it was fine. I think I like this more as I watched it now than I liked it when I originally watched it. Uh, I remember as a kid going, "What was this all about?" Not yeah, liking I, it that much. I feel like the the whole like Freakazoid uh, popping in is almost like a you're still watching Freakazoid kids. <laughs> <Don't> yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Like, yeah, like Freakazoid likes these guys. You should too. <laughs> you yeah, know? like, uh, um, yeah. I like the whole putting fire in your pocket. I guess, which is funny. I got they stole man's fire and then tried <laughs> to put it in their pocket. There's some like cute line, but yeah, overall. Yeah. There's too many like redundancy to like the the whole like great myth like mystic gnome coming out and saying like be good. I guess the point is that they keep getting told to be good and they don't do it. But yeah, and it still I, seems like a lot of like foreshadowing of like yep we know. <laughs> they're so grotesque looking too that yeah their teeth and their nose and everything like that that it makes me not think they're funny just because they're so. <laughs> They're so disgusting looking. Um, but yeah, you're right. There are funny lines. It's like, you know, the writing's all there and it's funny stuff. But whether it's the way that they look and they're saying it or the way that the lines are being delivered or something, it's just, um, it didn't work out as, as funny as or funny as it could be. Mm. I did like Maurice LaMarche's line, though, of, there, you're cursed. So, there. Yeah. <laughs> I... My goodness, a gnome actually apologized? And the rest of you? Your willingness to change has so impressed me that I will affect a different curse. Can you make slow, overweight birds appear out of thin air? Yes, but I won't. Yeah, see, all that stuff was really good. Uh, it's just, I don't know, it, it was, I think it was just a, a situation where they had to get a lot of stuff out, and maybe this one was just a, rushed a little too fast, and didn't quite it wasn't quite as funny as it could have been Mm -hmm. so i think it's an interesting concept i just wish it was better i guess i don't know (laughs) yeah oh well well love to see more but almost all the voice actors behind them are dead so (laughs) i don't know if i'll ever see them in the reboot well (laughs) on that note uh let's go ahead oh wait we can't get to the water tower rating yet because we have one very important uh, segment. We have to learn how to say K-A-P. 
a coupe le fromage. Because it's Frenching with Freakazoid. Yee! Let's learn how to speak French because it's time for Frenching with Freakazoid. Bonjour, class. Comment allez-vous? Bon. Et maintenant, la leçon du jour. Qui a coupé le fromage? Je répète. Qui a coupé le fromage? Who cut the cheese? Who cut the cheese? Qui a coupé le fromage? Bon, merci. Au revoir. This has been Frenching with Freakazoid. I certainly know how to say who cut the cheese at this point because of Freakazoid. Uh, and it's just so stupid and cute and short. And there it is. Any thoughts on the, this right here? Um, he says other French words as well. Because he... We. Oui. Yeah, he goes, bonjour, classe. <laughs> you know, uh, comment à la voice bien? Like, yeah. I guess it's how are you? Comment allez-vous? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and he says so like, and now today's lesson and good, thank you, goodbye. So, uh, yeah, they're all. And as so, far as far as I can tell, as a person who doesn't speak any French, uh, Paul yeah. Rudd did a very good job. Yeah, <laughs> very funny. Uh, yeah, it's just like a cute little one joke, but I enjoyed it. It reminded me a little bit of uh, Steve Martin, and uh, then, of course, uh, Dexter's Laboratory stole his joke with omelette du fromage. Um, just, French is funny to say. <laughs> it's just a funny thing. Omelette du fromage. Omelette du fromage. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the best Dexter episodes. <laughs> Uh, Kelly, any any moments of, of Frenching with Freakazoid? Did you, did you like Frenching with Freakazoid, or were you like no? <laughs> um, I thought it was cute. I mean, I, I thought the phrase was a little, you know, not Crass. brand <laughs> humor, but I liked the way it sounded in French. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's everything great? sounds classy in French. When I like that, oui. it's educational. It's just nice because um, you can learn. More than six French words there. Yeah. We. Oui. All right. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and get to our Water Tower rating. All right. How many uh, Water Towers out of five, of course, would you give this episode of Freakazoid? Kelly, let's start with you. I'm. I guess I'll go with three. Um, it was okay, and fanboy had Mark Hamill, which gives it extra points. Um, so I, I thought it was kind of funny, but um, I didn't really like the lawn though. Gnomes. All right, Nathan. What about you? Uh, I'll say two and a half. Uh, because. Yeah, I mean, I would only watch half the episode, I think. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, so half the episode is great, and the other half, I I could take it or leave it, I guess. Um, so yeah, two and a half for See, me. Nathan, you're going mathematically on this, and literally saying like I'd give it five if it was two fanboy quality episodes, then it would be yeah, five. I would. But since it's only a hundred percent halfway, it's a fifty percent. <laughs> I'm more emotional in my decisions, and I'm saying okay. four out of five on this one because well, the lawn gnomes. Surprise! Yeah, lawn gnomes. <laughs> lawn gnomes. Uh, while it is not my favorite, uh, certainly not my favorite Freakazoid skit, I do like it a little bit. Uh, but the fanboy one is just so good. I mean, Ingmar and the and the Freakmobile and. Everything about uh, Fanboy is just so funny, down from his voice to his just general look of wearing these pants that are shorts that are just way too short on him. <laughs> and, <laughs> and even just down to the, you know, getting the chicks, yowza, and all, just any, just anything. Again, it's just little moments all combined that uh, it still ranks as one of my favorite Freakazoid cartoons. 
So in all, though, yeah, it does lose a little bit with the lawn gnome. So four out of five for me. Well, let's go ahead and get to some contact information. Kelly, where can people get in contact with you online? I'm on Twitter at Yoda Princess, Y-O-D-A, P-R-N-C-S-S, or email me, Kelly, at BigShinyRobot.com. And Nathan, what about you? Uh, oh, I'm on Twitter as well, Joey. Uh, Django FT, that's me. All right. And as for the Animaniacast, we're on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. You can support us by going to our Tee Public store, which is tpublic.animaniacast.com. And you can also subscribe and rate and review our podcast. Uh, we've had some wonderful uh, reviews there recently, but we'd love to get some more. So head on over to Apple Podcast and uh, leave us a five-star rating and review. We'd love to, to read some more of those on the air. And hey, as long as you're subscribing to podcasts, you should subscribe to the RetroZap podcast feed because we are a proud member of the RetroZap podcast community. You can subscribe to the RetroZap podcast feed and get every single one of the podcasts delivered straight to your device. And then, why not head over to Discord and talk to all the podcast hosts about those episodes? You can get a welcome link by going to discord.animaniacast.com and uh, join the fun over there. So lots of different things to do. Go do it all. Now, go, go. Okay, good. (laughs) Well... That'll do it for today's episode. So, for Nathan and Kelly, this is Joey saying, Good night, everybody! Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Take it away, Ingmar. Good. (laughs) (laughs) This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, Freakazoid, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacast, unless otherwise indicated. You know, I think this might be the perfect time to have a conversation with my inner child. Billy. Billy. Hello. I've grown quite large. I brought you shorts. Good. I I can't come out because of my girth. I brought you a diet book as well. Okay, I think we've gone as far as we can go. Today's show is brought to you by Podcoin. And what is Podcoin? Well, let me tell you. It's a free podcast app that actually pays you to listen to podcasts. Yeah, it's true. It's crazy. Well, here's the thing. You download the PodCoin app, and then you use the code ANIMANIACS, and that way you get 300 PodCoin just for signing up. And then you can use that PodCoin to get, like, gift cards uh, like Starbucks or uh, Amazon or, or whatever, but there's a lot of it. So, excuse me. Yeah, what? What if, what if you like charity? What if you're like me and you like da- donating to charity? Well, if you like this guy, you can you can donate to charity too or something. I don't know. But personally, I like getting my Starbucks gift cards. And that's what I use PodCoin for. Thank you very much. All right. So, so what do I do again? You go to your app store and then you download PodCoin. And then you use the code Animaniacs. And you get 300 PodCoin. There. You happy now? Yeah. All right. Do it. Bye.